You sent us all your singles recommendations over the last couple weeks. And we haven't listened to them yet. Welcome to the special second Spin It Singles episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Spin It, the record ranking podcast for people who would rather be listening to music. I'm James, and with me is my friend Connor. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're friends. Yes. I'm glad to see I haven't been demoted to co-worker. No. The closest you came was Plastic Hearts. Oh. Plastic Hearts, Pixie Queen, and More Hearts Than Mine were really our darkest hours. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, you still also haven't um, forgiven me for where I placed Pink Floyd either. That's true. That was an early indicator of where this was all headed. Anyway. I'm going to eat some uh, potato chips while we do this, so don't mind me. I'll try not to mind you. Uh, where was I? Right. Yeah, this is my co-worker, Connor. And today... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, sorry about that. Hang on. Hang on. I'm getting a phone call. <laughs> Gosh. Hey, Josh. What's up? Dude, I'm recording right now. What is this chaotic episode? Oh, man, my bad. Hi. Uh, hey, James. Yeah, James can hear you right now, so don't say anything bad about him. All right, all right. Anyway, we're professional podcasters. All right, have fun. Uh, I see you. Anyway, where were we? Coworkers. <laughs> So this week, we were doing something a little differently. Normally, we take an album that I know and love and Connor's never heard, and we will rank it and give it a score on a scale of 100 for me. And uh, for Connor, it's a little different every time. Uh, always out of 10. It, the question is always 10 what? Always out of 10. 10 units. 10 units. So that's our normal shtick. But this week, once in a while, we like to mix up and do different things. And we've solicited our A&R department our albums and records department, which is, you know, the, the audience, the listeners, you sitting in your chair or in your car or standing elsewhere right now. If you're listening to this right now, congratulations. You're part of the a r department. Yes. Full benefits and everything. Well, yeah. Um, as many benefits as we offer the squirrels, at least. Full squirrel benefits. Yes. And you gave us eight of your favorite songs. Eight songs you want to hear us talk about or you want us to listen to. And we have also each brought our own single. And that's what this episode is. It's just us live listening to some music and telling you all about it. I'm excited. I'm excited too. We did our, our first singles episode was 30 episodes ago, episode 15. And our, our Christmas Eve episode, way back episode 24, was a singles episode of sorts. Was that the last time we did one? Yes. It's been too long. It's been a bit. So I'm excited to get back into it. And we're going to start off with that classic game that uh, we introduced in the first singles episode, Pass the Aux Chord. That's where Connor and I will trade singles back and forth. Is that the order we do things in? It's been so long, I couldn't remember the order. When when do we do uh, the other classic game introduced in the first singles episode? <laughs> I felt like, so last time we played a variant of Factor Spin called Guess Who or Spin. The mixtaper came in and gave a bunch of facts and, and played a game. I think we should do that at the end of the episode. At the end? Yeah, we'll have a little more familiarity with the artists at that point. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So stick around. The segment's not cut. It's just moved. <laughs> so let's get started. Last time we had some debates about who was going to go first. Who went first? I don't remember. And out of the goodness of my heart, I let you go first. Oh, okay. Well, then this time out of the goodness of my heart, I'll let you go first. Oh, uh, I please. I insist. Uh, kick us off. Oh, no, 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 no. I insist. Well, the thing about that is I'm intrigued because on our list, uh, detailing the songs we're about to talk about, all you wrote for your song is, I don't want to tell you because you'll hate it. <laughs> I may have picked the doozy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Which doozy? If you really want to start our singles episode off with my doozy, we can start off doozying. Uh, the way I see it, if we start there, it's... It's only gonna get better. All right, you know, I think I picked a pretty reputable uh, and intriguing artist, but the song choice is... Reputable and intriguing, okay? It's really not as bad as I'm making it out to sound, I think, or as you're interpreting my words. Yeah, what's the opposite of hyping it up? You've really set me up to think I'm gonna despise it. I think you're just gonna despise its length. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have picked Rhapsody in Blue by George Gershwin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, did you? Specifically the version done by the Columbia Symphony <laughs> Orchestra, which is 16 minutes and some odd seconds long. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, that's classic. That's a single. That's uh, <laughs> it's a great one. Yeah. Listen, I've been talking. I've mentioned it a couple times in past episodes that I've been wanting to do some instrumental, some orchestral or symphonic sounding music. You know, maybe an instrumental album. Yeah. And I felt like George Gershwin would be an interesting album to choose. Would be something, some compilation of George Gershwin music. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And so I thought I'd give, I thought I'd give you a little taste of it with some Rhapsody in Blue. <laughs> what I love and hate about this is it's going to be the first thing on the playlist for this episode. <laughs> I was going to be like, oh, let's see what singles they did. <laughs> Rhapsody in Blue? I warned you. Well, I won't veto it. Specifically, again, the Columbia Symphony Orchestra oh. version. 16 minutes, 27 seconds. Fantastic. Whether we listen to all 16 minutes. Oh, no, no. We're doing all 16 minutes and 27 seconds. Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. It's a great song. I'm not saying it's not. I agree. So... I guess before we get into it, quick little thing. George Gershwin, right? American pianist and composer. Done all sorts of very popular songs. Most popular song being Rhapsody in Blue, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, easily. Some things like I Got Rhythm, Summertime, Fascinating Rhythms, uh, all sorts of stuff, right? Yes. Super popular, kind of jazzy, instrumental piano movements. Rhapsody in Blue, uh, he did in 1924. Originally was a solo for piano and then a jazz band accompanying it. He's since done all sorts of different like orchestral or symphonic scoring of it. It's really a song that really helped define what they called the jazz age. It's one of those songs that you probably recognize the intro to without realizing. It's like Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Everybody knows that, right? Yeah, it's everywhere. You probably know Rhapsody in Blue even if you don't realize you know it. It's true. With that, I think we should just jump right into the song. I suppose we shouldn't dilly dally. So, <laughs> my last note on the song is that I consider this song the song I would want my going mad montage to be scored over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, like in a movie when like you see like a character, they do like a montage of a character slowly d descending into madness. Yeah, like Joaquin Phoenix kicking his way down the steps in the Joker. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I would want this to be my going mad montage song. Okay. Well, with that in mind. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Count us down, maestro. Three, two, one. On one or after one? I, I went. Oh, awkward. Well, I did too, but then I paused it because you... The, the false start, false start. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we did this so many times in all the other singles <laughs> episodes. I'm going to say three, two, one, and then I'm not going to say go or anything. And you're just going to... Maybe three, two, one, and where I would say go is when you would hit play. Well, then why not say go? I guess. Three... Two, one, go. That C, that was nice and easy. That nice little uh, clarinet glissando is what it's called. Yeah, it's peaceful. Ba, 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 ba. Recognize that part of the song, audience? Did you hear <laughs> that in there? Right, so in my Going Mad montage, this is when you would uh, be introduced to the character just going about their daily lives, right? Oh, I thought you meant the Going Mad montage was in the context of already knowing you, and this is when you deteriorate. You mm -mm. just meant... It's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I need to listen to more classical music. It's so good. I love it. And so, you know, like maybe you're going about your daily chores. Maybe you're walking down the street. I don't know. In my head, I'm imagining just some sort of mundane activity happening right now. Maybe you're doing dishes or something. Recording a podcast. I can actually really vividly picture me doing that right now. <laughs> oh, and picked up symbols yeah it really it really goes and so this would be like the first whatever annoying thing is gonna drive me mad this is the first like maybe there's a if you're doing the dishes right there's some spot that keeps reappearing on a dish sure you know something like that you're describing yourself in a looney tunes episode to this song is what's happening pretty much <laughs> or maybe i'm doing yard work and a gopher keeps popping up caddyshack you, you want this yeah. to be your caddyshack music video <laughs> Because the way he plays with uh, dynamics. Yeah. Oh, I love that piano. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like right now we're back into my day. I've, I've calmed down for a little bit. I've, I've gotten rid of the gopher or whatever. Or the spot on the dish. Yeah. Yeah. It is impressive to hear how subtly and like prominently at the same, like you don't notice the shift in the mood, but it's significant. Mm -hmm. Seamless, but significant. Yeah. And there's all these different themes that intertwine their way in and out and different ones get featured at different points, but you never really notice when you switch from one to the other. Well, there's a little bit of that ragtime coming through mm -hmm. in what he's doing with the keys. Mm -hmm. I mean, just how good you must be in music to just be able to conceptualize something like this. And so in the scenario with the gopher right now, I'd be like hammering a bunch of different holes. As he's going, bah, 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 as he's going down that, and then bam, there, the gopher's back. Ah! Playing whack-a-mole. And I'm really going at it like smack, 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 like to the tempo, right? Yeah. We're in this bigger moment for a little bit here. This is a good big moment. Audience, uh, 
ba 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 those those trombones that's, come in. Yeah, that's the part where we're at. And then you hear the uh they hear the uh clarinet in the background. Bam bam. And this would be like the montage of me like chasing the gopher like down a line or something. It's literally a Looney Tunes episode. Listen, this is what I this is what I think about when I listen to classical music. That's this is it. Are you sure you haven't already had your descending into madness montage? <laughs> Uh, audience, for your reference, we're currently four minutes and 45 seconds into the song. Yeah, it's been more than the length of most of the other singles we'll talk about today already. <laughs> oh, and things are calming back down. Oh, there it goes again. <laughs> I'm thinking sometimes maybe during the calm sections, like maybe like in the Looney Tunes episode, like the uh, the like wife or the friend would come by and like calm, calm the, the person friend. down. We're talking about your descent into madness. It's the friend. All right. And this is the singles episode. <laughs> <laughs> My episode. My, it's my, an episode for my people. <laughs> what a little whiny trumpet. Mm -hmm. and there goes that piano again. I guess I can't even complain. The last time I made you watch a music video about alien warfare, <laughs> aliens invading Earth, and having to turn into a giant robot to stop it. Last time I came with the normal one. This is me getting my comeuppance. This would be a good spot for like maybe I've hit myself with the hammer mallet or whatever, and so I've seen like little gophers around my head. What if you wash the dishes? What is this in that <laughs> metaphor? Uh, Alternate universe. Little dancing, little dancing dishes with spots on them. Yeah, but but like how'd you hit yourself? Maybe the dishwasher door came up and hit me. The dishwasher. Or I bonked my head on a cabinet. <laughs> I'm not even gonna dig into that. And so here, this is that same theme, but with a completely different tone. We're at the seven and a half minute mark audience. Yeah, we're moving right along. Not even halfway there yet. It's very much like, I could hear where it's a solo piano piece first. Mm -hmm. In parts like this, where it's just the low end of the piano doing its thing. The uh, original piano only version is like 12 minutes. And you hear that little like walking piano line and bump, bump. Um, Hard to miss. Oh, audience, we passed the halfway mark. We Regular. did it. The main reason I picked the Columbia Symphony version is for the second half. I really like what they do in the second half of the song. I want to learn to play the piano. Just, I mean, that'd be great if I could just do that. Yeah. I can't get both hands going at once is my problem. Yeah, that's tricky. A hush falls over the song. And now you think it's over. And now we're back. So this here is like the moment of clarity. I've uh, maybe I've come over the hill with my madness. Ah, then is it a moment of clarity or your most obstructed moment yet? Maybe I've done the thing where like I'm having that out of body experience where like my soul floats up out of my body and then is interacting with things like little ghost scopers coming up with a truce or something. Yeah. <laughs> what? Like, like I'm thinking of Tom and Jerry, like when like uh, Tom will like, he he'll like die and he'll, his ghost comes out. So you, in this scenario, you've tried to kill a pesky gopher, yep. failed. Yep. You, you played whack-a-mole with it for a little bit. You hit yourself on the head with the mallet, yep. died. Yep. And are now negotiating with the ghosts of other gophers. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe we're doing the thing where we're sitting around a fancy table. I've like, I put the little napkin on as a bib and I'm eating with the gopher and we're what? chatting it up or whatever. We're having a good old time. It's like a montage of us hanging out. We have dinner, we go frolicking through the park, me and this gopher. But you can still hear in the background that little theme of the ba 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 the tension, right? Yeah. It's still nagging at me a little bit. Maybe I'm doing like some looking back things during, during this experience. I keep looking back at my dead body and having little twinges of anger. What is this pot? Podcast. Why are you here? <laughs> and so this here, I I go back into my body, and now we're doing. It's like back into that plunkier side of things. Audience, why are we here? That's me going back in. <laughs> uh, audience, for your reference, we're at the twelve minute forty second mark. Uh, and hopefully, you've only been listening to us talk about it for about eighteen seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is playful. It's a fun little playful version of that theme. They've added like this bouncing one. Yeah. You go real quiet. You think it's over. I don't think it's over. I can see the timestamp. As you weren't looking at the timestamp, though. You'd be like, oh, it's over. Well, as most people who went to see symphonies are not. Yes. <laughs> oh, this is tense. It sounds like the gopher uh -huh. from beyond the grave has not accepted your peace treaty. So in, the, in, the, in this scenario, I start seeing a bunch of holes in my yard again. And so it starts to trigger me. You know, I'm starting to relapse. This is our, our commentary about Rhapsody in Blue <laughs> has so little to do with Rhapsody in Blue. It, but yet so much. Ah, uh, it's debatable. <laughs> And now I'm imagining in this part, it's me looking back and forth from left to right at my shoulders where I have a little angel and devil gopher. And I'm like negotiating back and forth with them. But now you see that background, that, that theme is now kind of triumphant sounding. The tension is coming from the piano rather than the orchestra. Yeah, they've really made it into a fanfare. And so now I feel like this is, and you notice how the, how the fanfare overrides. Oh! It crescendos up and ble drowns out the, the tension there. And so to me, that would be like me working it out with the gopher. 
This is all right here. This is it all building at the 16 minute mark. Building one final build. And this is us now just like doing a like dramatic kick down as we're walking down like a path together. <laughs> arm in arm. Arm in arm. How are you arm in arm with a gopher and walking at the same height? How big is this gopher? Well, I'm, I'm, my arm comically stretches down to the gopher's height. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what it must be like to live in your world. <laughs> we're walking down a path, down my, my garden path, and our legs are doing that dramatic, more dramatic kick than a normal walk. And he's really slowing it down here for the end. One final big fanfare. I lied earlier. We're just now at the 16 minute mark. That was the 15 minute mark earlier. Yeah, I, I <laughs> wasn't going to say anything. Ooh, seventh. Uh-huh. The dominant sevenths. And you hear that that running line that's just crescendoing into a final stinger. Gotta have a good stinger. That's all, folks. <laughs> that's all, folks. <laughs> Absolutely a Looney Tunes episode. I have nothing further to say. The song was great. Your story was here. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely an interesting pick for Spin It in the singles episode. Well, I'm taking the aux cord from you. Pass the aux Aww. cord my way. Yeah, it sounds like I'm not even getting the chance to pass it. It's just being ripped out of my hands. <laughs> well, you just spent 16 minutes making everyone in the car listen to George Gershwin, <laughs> which was good. I don't want to... I mean, I liked it. So what's your song? I wanted to take it a different direction. I went with, last time, an up-and-coming Eurovision contestant with the super awesome 10 years. My next single is from a lesser-known band. They are a five-piece Nashville-based indie rock band called The Pressure Kids. The song is actually the song that initially drew me to them. It's called Untitled. Oh. But the parenthetical title is Pick Me Up. And it's kind of funny to me to have a song with a title called Untitled, but whatever. I saw this band live at an annual concert series the city puts on in 2019. And this song, like I said, this is what hooked me. I listened to this song and I was like, whoa. And it's not just because some of the other performers that I saw at the event were not that great. It's because these guys were really good. They started making music when they were college freshmen in 2013. And up to 2019, they released the first of two self-titled EPs. To date, they've got more than a dozen songs out, as well as a couple music videos. And my understanding is they've got a full-length album coming at some point. So that's about all I've got. Without further ado, I'm curious to hear what you think of Untitled, Pick Me Up by The Pressure Kids. Do you want to be the designated counter downer or should we alternate? I think we should alternate. Well, maybe since it's untitled, we'll uncount it. Oh, okay. So you did three, two, one, go. I'm going to uncount it and we'll do go one, two, three, right? Got it. Right. Untitled, uncounted. Go one, two, three. You've already messed it up. No, I didn't. Oh, no, you're right. You didn't. <laughs> no. Did you start it? I did. Did you? <laughs> okay, good. I'm still going. I'm at eight seconds, nine. Okay. Oh, is that static real or is that in my headphones? That's real static. It's that's supposed to be there. See how it builds up to this little slow burn here? I love this this little guitar hook that they do. It catches my ear right away. It's very yeah, it's very earwormy as you like to say. Yeah, it is. And then they come in full band with the drums. It's yeah. nice. But still with that rhythm. Mm-hmm. It is a little bit of a longer intro, but I like it so much that that's never bothered me. And they walk it up right before the verse. I like a lot of the imagery they use, the shining face. It's great. We finished the verse and we're right back at it. I do like this instrumental. I know. This is what swept me away with it. They pull the drums from it for a second just to give it a little extra pop. It takes them a bit to get to a chorus, but I think that's not bad. The production on this song, too, for an indie rock pop band in Nashville, I am all for it. It sounds like more sounds than you should be able to make with five instrumentalists, right? And I think that's really cool. Oh, I like that cutout. I know. With the I weird, was... like, little click. What was that click that they did during the... That drumsticks hitting right before they came back in, or what was that? Yeah, I think it's just a little symbol to keep the rhythm in there. Oh, gotcha. There's a little guitar part here that mixes things up a little bit. What, what a great drum part, too. Finally, we get a little bit of a chorus, or a bridge, if you want to call it that. And a slightly different instrumental. Yes, that's where we get the untitled, Pick Me Up Baby, I Know You Can. Oh, I like what's happening here. Yeah. That guitar is really selling this song. It really is. It's just this wall of kind of noise, but you're vibing with it. That guitar is the car salesman that approaches you even though you're just looking, but somehow convinces you to buy a new car anyways. Yeah, you're buying the car? I like that. Uh, I think so. I think I'm buying it. I need a new car. I need a new car? That's not true. Well, if you get a new car, pick me up. I know you can. I, I like the idea of a song called Pick Me Up on the episode of My People. This The episode of Your People. Single people. And then they stop it. Just yeah. hard stop right at the end. Yeah, it does. I think there's a lot of texture in that song. I think it's uh, a lot of heart behind that one. I would like to point out that I would argue you came awfully close to also having an instrumental. 
song. A lot of that was that guitar rhythm. <laughs> there was several. It really leans into that with no lyric. There's only like two verses and a bridge. There wasn't even really much of a chorus. Well, that's why it's untitled. There's not enough to title it. Fair enough. I didn't mind it though. I, I could have listened to that little but up up all day long. And the good news is now you can check out our playlist with all the episodes singles on Spotify and YouTube and, and around. But that concludes our song trading segment past the aux chord. That, that's the singles we brought to the table. It's time to see what you brought to the table, audience. Now, the first single we've got on the docket, I'm super excited about. It was recommended to us by uh, an A&R department friend who also brought us one of our favorite singles from the first episode. Oh. Yes. This song is Tired Eyes by the band Sink In. Sinkin is actually, they're about to go on tour with Unwell for their sketchy summer tour. So these bands that wrote Solstice, right, that we loved from Singles Episode 1, I'm hoping Tired Eyes from Singles Episode 2 will be a standout. Not to put too much pressure on it, but it better be the best song. I'm just kidding. I say, yeah, just you're, kidding. you're really hyping it up. Um... Let me tell you about them. Sink In, they're a three-man pop rock band. They've got a vocalist and two guitarists as their instrumental makeup. They're based out of Los Angeles, and they've been putting out music since 2015. Their debut album, called... Ordinary People, Extraordinary Things came out in 2017. Tired Eyes is a single that came out a couple years later in 2019. So that's your, your brief little overview of Sink In. I have a fun little tidbit about this band, actually. You have a tidbit, yes. I'm fairly certain if my memory serves. You'll remember during the first singles episode, I was shocked to find out that the Unwell song was by the band I was going to see with our art department friend. Yes. I'm fairly certain if my memory serves me correctly, Sink In was the band they were on tour with at the time that's correct and i was going to remind you of that and see if you've forgotten again so i'm curious to know if this is a song they played that night if i'll recognize it but yeah i've seen these people perform yes you have so uh without further ado uh, i guess we're on your turn to count us in sink us in you know, sink us up sink up sink in sink up sink in yeah time, time to sink up sink in to sue no that's that's wrong so to see, think up, sink in. Susie. I thought you were doing a Susudio joke. Susudio. <laughs> Stop, just play the song. All right, I'm going to cut us down on, so I'll go su, su, and then on studio, on the O, we'll, we'll play. Su, su, sudi, O. Oh, yeah, okay, sure, whatever. Yeah. Oh su, su, sudio. I've been excited to listen to this song. Me too. Oh, vocal tricks. Mmm, that's some good guitar. I like it. I, I think they pair well with Unwell from what I'm hearing so far. Oh, I love what they did with the drums right there, that little double stutter step. I love what they're doing with the vocals here. There's a high one and a low one mm -hmm. at the same time. Great harmony. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we've hit a chorus. Sorry, yeah, I'm not talking. I was wrapped up in that chorus. That was a good hit. I know. It was big. Because they build into it with the tired eyes, mm -hmm. like the, the vocal distorted part right there at the beginning of it. Ooh, they're ditching parties. Yeah. It's a shame. Oh, that's not what I expected that to do. They got me there. No. They got me on Bellion Song. They do a lot of dynamic work. Only loved in shades of gray. Yeah. I like the lines. Mm -hmm. What's weird about this one is nothing feels like it's sticking with me yet. Yeah, yeah. Like, we're saying all these things we like on your, your pick. I instantly, like, that guitar rhythm worked its way into my brain. I'm going to be humming it all night long. Yeah, you could sing along with it. I'm loving everything I'm hearing here but nothing is like sticking with me that i'm gonna be humming except for the vi the vocal part your tired eyes like that at the beginning that's still here yeah oh nope, there it is again ba, 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 ba. I, I like that too the uh the feeling like i with a pause before they go into ran from the whirlwind yes yeah i like that pause that's that's smart it would have been very easy to just run right into the <laughs> into the ran uh run into the ran but they didn't no I honestly can't remember if they played this or not. It's been a minute for you. I, I mean, yeah, it's been eight months. Oh, the echo on the fade out. Interesting. Oh, that was an interesting fade out. I like that song a lot. I think I could get into the band. I I did too. I'm not sure if this was a good intro song, but I think I think it's got a lot going on. So what I really liked, what really stuck to me and why I remembered Sinkin is because I'm fairly certain they're the ones at the concert who really brought the house down and like they had everybody get in a circle around them while they sat on stools and it was just uh, the one guy with uh, a guitar and the other guy like I think hitting some drums or something like with his hands mm -hmm. and they did a like almost a song kind of like that I think that was Sinkin. I could be misremembering if not I'm sorry whoever I'm forgetting about that was at that concert but I think that was Sinkin. well they brought the house down yeah that was a good song good recommendation top notch uh, I guess we'll see where it falls uh at the end we will still playlist two of these songs 
All right, the next singles recommendation, I'll admit, is one that I already know. A bit of a loser. It's, it is a, a bit of a loser. <laughs> well, the song is Loser by Julian Moon. And it's a song I've heard once or twice before. It's been recommended to me personally, but it's also now been recommended for the episode. So here it is. Did you take the personal recommendation or is this their way of forcing you? Yeah, I listened to it. Oh, okay. That's why I said I've heard it before. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't paying attention to that part. I was eating my potato chips. Still? Uh Uh-huh. How many do you have? A whole bag. There are a lot of different sized bags of potato chips. Uh, this is a five ounce bag. A five, really nursing that. Five ounces is a decent amount. I guess in chips. And I'm trying to eat them in between talking. Okay, good point. Yeah, chips don't weigh very much, so five ounces of chips. I think like the bags of chips you can get at like Subway and restaurants and stuff are only like two ounces. So this is like two and a half of those. Whoa. Anyway, so I looked up... I try to look up info on all of our singles artists, all of them that I can anyway. Sometimes you spring a George Gershwin on me and I'm unprepared. But (laughs) I looked up Julian Moon and and she doesn't actually have a ton of info available online. What I do know is that she's released a handful of singles, an LP called Good Girl, and a bit of a concept EP based around the myth of Persephone, the wife of Hades. So if you like the song, maybe that'll be your cup of tea. I know you're a mythology guy. I am a mythology guy. But isn't that also the myth that Smashing Pumpkins guy did a, wrote a 20-minute musical about or whatever? Yeah, you tried to tell me that it was Halsey, but I yes. <laughs> I knew better. So yeah, popular myth that, that she's based her EP around. Another interesting little tidbit is that Julian Moon frequently works with producer Greg Wells, who has credits with artists like Katy Perry and more. So getting out there, getting some names. And I suppose it is my turn to count us down. Indeed. So let's do it. Three, two, one, go. Another good guitar intro. Yeah, we've got a more acoustic indie pop kind of feeling here. Singer songwriter. I love her voice. The echo that they put on it. It's like very nicely polished. It reminds me of someone. I don't remember who. Maybe it reminds you of Julian Moon. Honestly, a bit of Casey Musgraves, actually. Yeah, I can hear that. What I like about these verses... Oh, I like the word place there. How the, 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 she, she fell on the word place. Yeah, it was... Oh, and Super Mario Kart. Wonderful. Wonderful, right? I love all the little... It's a simple kind of verse that just presents these relatable images. The chorus, the xylophone, it's just the nicest little sprinkle. Yes, I was actually... That's why I wasn't talking. I was really list, trying to listen to it in the background. Oh, I'm sorry I talked over it. Thanks for ruining that. I'm sorry. I actually really like that chorus. That was a really nice course yeah there's a little bit of loser in us that's kind of the idea of it oh a screw on top to a mason jar we're the perfect fit we're into the verse where we're gonna be doing uh doing a bunch of metaphors yes back of the bus holding hands they've added a lot of ambient instrumentals i want to i want to say this song does not fit the episode of my people no this is a love song oh this is the opposite of what my people are used to we don't we don't get any of these metaphors or references you don't sorry the single (laughs) people may not understand what a bridge very well constructed yeah and another dominant seventh i'm really liking the vocal play here on friday night and all i need that really fun little just fun vocals absolutely this is another song that's super stuck in my head (laughs) So when the song started, I had my worries. Typically when a singer has that more whispery, airy sound to their voice, and it's as unsupported at its base like this song is, I have I take issue with it. Mm-hmm. But I don't on this one. I think this one, it works It works for some reason. I don't have that reason, but it worked. But it worked. Yeah, I, I like that song a lot. I think it's catchy. And I think, honestly, it's the shortest song that we're going to be talking about today, but it's jam-packed. Like, it feels like a whole complete story. Yeah. It's got a very full arc. It's a fun play on a love song. Just saying, you know, being like, hey, we're a couple of losers. Yeah, but like, we fit well together because we're both losers in the same way. So up next is a song that comes from a friend of yours. Yes, this is another one I know. I've heard several, many a time. Several, many a time, yes. As one sometimes always does. This song is Nothing Has Changed by The Polar Boys. The Polar Boys are another band that I just couldn't find a ton, a ton about. But what I do know uh, is The Polar Boys, or Pobo as they call themselves, are based in Miami, Florida. Their lone LP so far, World Domination, came out in 2021. But they've also got a handful of singles out and an EP called Now That's What I Call Polar Boys, which I think is hilarious. Nothing Has Changed is one of the singles that the band has put out. And it came out in 2019. Now, I didn't listen to it in 2019, but we're going to listen to it now and see whether nothing has changed. This listener, they understood the concept of this episode and made sure this was a song for my people. This is a song about single people? Uh, In a way. Okay, in a way. Let's find out what that way is. 
really, it ties. This is the perfect order to kind of be doing this in because, spoiler alert, this is kind of a song reflecting on a since lost relationship. Oh, the loser. And so, whereas I said none of my people would really get what the last song was talking about, and from this point of view, they are remembering that time. I see, I see. But uh, by all means, count us in. All right. Three, two, one, go. Oh, kicks off right away. Yeah, and another interesting kind of vocal rhythm and fall. That's the theme of this is is interesting starting vocals, isn't it? Well, aside from the instrumental and the near instrumental, everything started with a really cool vocal part. Oh, I love that little instrumental thing. Sounds like something reversed. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a nice little instrumental section here. Yeah, I'm getting into this. Uh huh. I like that guitar tone. I like that a lot. Oh, that's so clean. And find what we were never meant to be. Such a good line. There's not a lot of. It's just these two chords back and forth on the verse. It doesn't uh -huh. change much. It doesn't need much more though. No. And so now you get that thing that they s started with. Yes, that's a lot better. But it's more ramped up, and they take it up here on that line. On I'll think about my time with you. Yeah, I like this. Even when I'm old and blue, I'll think about my time with you. Yes. Oh, sounds so full. It is. It's a very full sound. I like the start of verse three, too. I love the singles episodes because I get to add all these songs to my repertoire now. It's a fun little verse. Oh, oh, the drums. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm a sucker for polyrhythms. And do you hear that little bong, 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 bong in the background that they add into the chorus on this one? And they've really dimmed it down. Yeah, yeah. It almost reminds me of like Inner Wave, but if Inner Wave decided to go full on pop songs. <laughs> yeah, this is a song you can really start dancing to. Uh-huh. It's a toe tapper. A nice little fun bridge. I like the line, just break the clock and make it stop. It's like time ticking away, right? Yeah. It goes well with the old and blue lines. That's, you know what? That's what I was thinking of somewhere around minute nine of George Gershwin. Yeah. And then they really overlap the out, uh, the chorus with the bridge here. Ready? They throw that no more the same innocent way in the background. Little puzzle pieces. They fit together. And we end on the major seventh. I love it. It really drags out how long they let that kind of go for. Yeah, but I think it's a good choice. Uh-huh. I'm all for it. That was a good one. So That was I'm a really good one. I really like that one. I did. So th this was the same listener who introduced me to the band Camino and recommended the album uh, Bad Songs. Yeah. Well, good. I, I can see that they have a similar uh, consistent taste in music. Yes. Well, the next song is one that I'm not sure what to expect. I'll be honest. It's a bit of a pivot from this pop and pop rock kick we've been on so far. This next song is called Aquarius slash Let the Sun Shine In by... You never heard this? No, I don't think I've ever heard this. Is by the band The Fifth Dimension. Uh, you might have, you might recognize it. We'll see. I might recognize it, but I, I don't know. We'll have to find out. The Fifth Dimension, uh, this is mostly why it's a pivot from the pop scene that we've been on. And from the newer, lesser known artists. This is a older artist. <laughs> yeah, they're a pop R&B, like soul group. They were one of the artists that, that played for a little bit and recorded with Motown Records. Yes. So, like, think Stevie Wonder. Their weird uh, conglomeration of genres is sometimes referred to as Champagne Soul. Champagne Soul, yes. So that's what we're getting into. This song that we're talking about is Aquarius, and uh, fittingly, it is from the album The Age of Aquarius, released in 1969. So we're going back into the past a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, without further ado, I guess it's my turn to count us down. Should we count down from five since they're the fifth dimension? Do it. Five, four, three, two, one. Go is what we'll be. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Go. That felt like a really long countdown. I know it was only an extra two <laughs> beats, but it felt long. I like this woodwind kind of intro that they do. Yeah, we've got some real musical, like, orchestral sections on this episode, don't we? And then that, that bass that crescendos up. Oh, that voice isn't what I was expecting. I'm fairly certain our high school band has done this song, by the way. Well, that doesn't mean I remember it. This is the part that maybe you'd recognize, this chorus. Once we get everybody's voice in there, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. That ba 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 That does sound familiar, but that might just be tropey. Yeah. This does sound almost like like, um, like cheesy TV sitcom intro music from 1969. Uh-huh. Like, it's reminding me of Greatest American Hero. Aquarius. It's so good. Yeah, and since this is one with a slash in it, I'm kind of waiting for it to make a hard pivot into a, almost a second song. Mm-hmm. It will. I know. I know it will. <laughs> I'm just letting you know that's my expectation. Peace will guide the planets and love will steer the stars. 
I love that steer the stars. That's a that's a good cadence. You know what's sad? Neither of us are Aquariuses. Yeah. I don't know if that's sad. It's just we don't we can't really truly understand the song. Here's the pivot. Mm-hmm. Let the sun shine in. I should have guessed this would be the lyrics based on the title. Let the sun shine in. That bass is really going to town, and I like that. This is where that soulful part comes in. Oh, he did a name drop. I want you to sing mm-hmm. along with the fifth dimension. That's them. Oh, he's so into it. I love that passion. It's like in a way that only soul music can provide. So here's a fun fact for you as we come towards the end of the song. Yes. So in case, for those of you wondering, what is the age of Aquarius? The age of Aquarius, astrologically, um, the age you are in is based off of the position of the sun and earth around the different constellations, right? In, yes. In, in the sky. And so each period lasts for 2,160 years. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. And opinions differ on the exact timing of when you pass from one age to the next, but it seems pretty undisputed in the astrological world that we are currently tr- in the transition phase from Pis- the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius right now. Oh, we're- As of like 2021, 2022-ish time, we are currently transitioning into the age of Aquarius. Well, that's exciting. May yeah. already be there, depending on how you view it when the transition begins and ends. So yeah. Look at that. A song from 1969 about right now. Topical. That was a good song though. It's fun. It's unique to what we'd heard. It's a nice little change of pace. It is a nice little change of pace. I love the, yeah, we get a lot of variety in the singles episode. And the next little bit of variety we're getting is the song Thought You Should Know by Morgan Wallen. Now. Going country. Going country. Morgan Wallen is an artist that I know a handful of little singles from, right? He does whiskey glasses, Mm -hmm. right? And I know a couple of others, but I've not been able to listen to his full album yet. I haven't got around to it. So this is, he's a newer one for me too. Yeah, I know nothing about him. Well, you want to? Let's do it. All right, Morgan Wallen. I meant, do you want to know more about him? Awkward. I thought you were ready for the count. I thought that was your secret signal for the countdown. My bad. My secret signal for the countdown is when I say, count us down. Oh, Just for the record, that's what it'll be. (laughs) Um, Gotcha. It's top secret. Don't don't tell anybody. (laughs) Morgan Wallen was born in 1993, which actually makes him slightly older than I kind of thought he was. He got his start on The Voice in 2014, but he was not a winner. But either way, that kicked his career off. He signed with Big Loud Records in 2016, and he's released a pair of albums to date, with which he's found pretty significant commercial success. His latest record, called Dangerous, has earned a Billboard Music Award for Top Country Album, a Country Now Award for Favorite Album, and an Academy of Country Music Award for Album of the Year. Pretty impressive. I just, uh, I thought you should know before we listen to Thought You Should Know. Gotcha. Yeah. So now you can count us down. That's the signal. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. I thought it was count it down. Oh, I, f- sorry, I forgot my own signal. I don't know if you did or not. I might have just misheard it. It's a mess. It's definitely not the signals episode. Count it down. Thought you should know. You're lucky I knew what that was supposed to be. <laughs> that was my super secret countdown signal. This feels weird to me. Ah, this is it's very like, uh, what's the wah-wah pedal like? Kind of, yeah, yeah. I know it wasn't, but it had that sound. It wasn't. Yeah, you're right. It makes me think of old country, but it sounds nothing like old country. This vocal rhythm doesn't match the instrumentals right now. Okay, that's getting a little better. Those last two lines did better. Did he just say he's been losing sleep since 93? That's as old as he is. That is that when he was born? That's his life. <laughs> yeah, that, that's funny. That's funny. The chorus finally synced up with the instrumentals, but that beginning of that first verse was a bit rough. Yeah, I didn't mind it. I did. Consider it minded. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe I'm on the radio? I thought you should know. Uh, you're not on the radio. You're on Spotify. He's also on the radio. This song is so, it's formatted like a letter to people back home. Thought you should know the prayers you thought you wasted on me are coming true. Love that. Hmm. It's a sweet song. This is a really sweet song. It's all right. Okay, I don't expect you, one among the singles, to understand sweetness. Yeah, it's another one that doesn't fit uh, what this was supposed to be. <laughs> I like the way he says radio every time. It's, it makes me giggle. He makes you giggle? Radio? Yeah, like a southern, like, little slight accent he has on the way he says radio. It's, it's more than a slight southern accent. And this has all the issues I have with modern country music baked right into it, though. Oh, you don't like this one? I don't mind a lengthy chorus, but when okay. it's a lengthy chorus that you repeat three times i was just thinking that he's been on this chorus a lot and back to back and it doesn't it doesn't change no it doesn't it's very cookie cutter which is my problem with a lot of modern country music nowadays it's all very cookie cutter yeah it feels like a song that's it's a song that's meant to make you remember it oh he's not gonna say radio anymore 
Maybe he won't. He's just going to say, I thought you should know a million times. Thought you should know, thought you should know, thought you should know, thought you should know, thought you should know. I guarantee that's what he's going to do. Yeah, he's doing it. Uh, it's where he's at. Near the end of the song, there's no way he doesn't just do that the rest of the song. Yep, there's another one. And another. I'm just glad he wanted to tell us that. He really thought we should know. Yeah. This is him trying to tell all the single people out there, all, the, all of my people, what it's like. He's like, I thought you should know about this, that I'm on the radio. It's like he didn't even listen to it. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was too busy complaining. I was too busy complaining about it to actually listen to it. <laughs> well, that's Morgan Wallen. Little taste. Hey, why was that song marked explicit? Did I miss something? Um, he says, damn, at some point in it. There's a there's a casual damn thrown in there. For casual beavers. <laughs> well, now we gotta keep that. Well, that makes it appropriate. There's not, a, there's not an N on the end of it if the beavers use it, so it's okay. It's just a casual damn for casual beavers. Okay, so the next song we're talking about is actually a band that you and I have both seen live. Yeah, I'm excited for this one. Yeah, so this song is called For Me It's You. It's by a band called Glimmers. Glimmers is a five... We got a lot of five-piece bands this week. Glimmers is a five-piece band of a bunch of friends from Atlanta, Georgia. They started out as a backing band for Atlanta artist Maggie Schneider, but they decided they had a good thing going, and they started putting out music as themselves, as Glimmers, in 2020. Right, smack dab middle of the pandemic. In the middle of it. <laughs> Maybe not smack dab. Anyway. Anyway, their debut EP called Cluttered Heart picked up almost 100,000 streams in just a few months. And that is where this song is from. I was several of them. You were you were several of them? Not during those, not during those first couple of months, but I've been several of them since. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. They put out a second EP in 2021, and they've released a couple singles since then, including... And I thought this was bizarre. A cover of This Is Me from the Disney Channel original movie Camp Rock. Oh, love it. Love it. Love Camp Rock. Um, so we saw Glimmers live, actually. We went to see... We're talking about Unwell a lot. But we went to go see Unwell, and they were on tour with Unwell. So so let's take a listen. You counted down the last one because I tried to give you the signal. Yes. Right, okay. This one's all you. I don't have a signal to give this time. Three, two, one, go. Love that start. It's so good. This is another one where I like the combination of the lead guitar. I love how they echo the vocal with the guitar. Mm -hmm. It's a nice touch. This song fits our our theme for the, for the single people out there. It's about being scared of relationships, but still being interested in trying to try one. Right. For the record, I don't know if I've said, this isn't a single people episode. No, it is. It's, it's, it, it is. Whatever you the need. episode to... of my people for all the singles out there. Oh, the single people. Oh, I like this part. Hang on. Quiet. I need you now. You just said so quiet good. and sang over it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I'd say it for the audience. The audience didn't know what part we were at. <laughs> Fair enough. That like lead down that then they just swing in. Oh, oh, the minor chord. The minor yes, chord. Yes, the minor chord at the end of the chorus. Love me one of those. Oh, she sounds way different on the next verse. I'm just kidding. I like the shift in singer. It keeps the song fresh. Yeah, it keeps the song fresh. And it really goes with the dichotomy of like two people who are scared of a relationship but are willing to make it to try it. It's a great duet. Mm -hmm. I think I'm a sucker for alt pop and indie pop and alt rock. I It's good. I know. For me, it's... And then they come in together on the next chorus. Yeah, I like this. I like the band. I like the song. Yeah. yeah. They were my favorite part of the concert, honestly. We went there to see Unwell, but... Glimmers blew me away. I already knew all the Elton Well songs, so they didn't have the shock value. Oh, yeah. But Glimmers was what I went out of there excited to listen to. Yeah, me too. And, uh... It's the first thing I put on on the drive back. I believe it. <laughs> and a little bridge. Oh, the bridge didn't move enough right there for me. Oh, over there. The way they hold out you gets me every time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm always like, all right, yeah. Why do you keep getting got by the way people say words? <laughs> it doesn't get me in, like, a giggle way. It gets me in, like, I like it way. Oh, different got. sorry. You yeah. got to be clarifying. You got to clarify your, your gets. <laughs> For me, it's you. Boom, and then boom, we bring it back boom, down to that boom, acoustic boom, guitar. Boom. So good. Yeah, I oh, like that a lot. Really, really draws out the fade out. But I like it. Yeah, I like it too. <sighs> Are you ready to get deep? Get deep? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm ready to get deep. Sure. The next song is a single. It's called Mad. It's by the band Glasslands. I'm a little familiar with Glasslands, but I haven't done a deep dive into them yet. And I've been meaning to. So this is a good starting point. I don't know if I know any of their songs. Well, welcome to, to this. <laughs> Glasslands is a three-piece metal band. Their first album... Did we explain the deep joke? Well, I'm getting there. Yeah, I'm so, getting there. Gotcha. 
So Glassland's first album, called Pariah, came out in 2016, and they just oh. released their second LP, which is a concept record called The Deep, hence Connor's deep joke. That came out on April 8th, 2022. Pretty deep. That joke was buried pretty deep. <laughs> I guess it was. The album was mixed and mastered by Caleb Shomo from the band Beartooth, which I love. And this album repeatedly references a character as a concept album. You know, it's got a little bit of a looser narrative thread to it. You don't know how I feel it. about those. Well, but it's like, it's not, a co- it's not a cohesive story. It's a bunch of songs that point back to these characters. And uh, the character's name is Mr. Creeps, and he lives in the deep. That's... Mr. Creeps, the deep is Mr. Creeps' version of the mixtaper's untrue. What? That didn't make any sense to me. The mixtaper lives in the untrue. That's the name of Oh, his... right. Gotcha. Sorry, it's we a... went deep into the lore right there. <laughs> we did. Sorry, I just dove, <laughs> dove head first into that little throwaway <laughs> sentence you said 17 episodes ago. I didn't say it. Did I say it? It could have been me. You did. It was you. It might have been me. might have been the mixtaper. Hard to tell them apart sometimes. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Remember that Descent of the Madness we were talking about earlier? (laughs) (laughs) Right. Anyway, uh, is it my countdown or you? It's me, right? I didn't get the signal. Well, for me, it's you. Oh. (laughs) That was so last song ago. Sorry, I I, I was late to the party with that joke. (laughs) I'm still waiting on the signal. Oh, yeah, you can count it down. Sorry, I forgot we were doing that. Uh, go. Oh. Sorry, I wasn't ready. (laughs) Sorry. Wait, I was ready. How was I ready on your own? <laughs> what? I oh. thought I was on the button, but I wasn't. <laughs> he says, go. Wait, I'm not ready. I'm I'm done. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay, uh, three, two, one, go. Oh, that was really disorienting for a start. I was trying to pick up the rhythm of the guitar. I'm interested to know where... Th- I'm interested to know how disorienting that would feel if you came into it, uh, you know, on a concept album. Like, if you came into it where it was meant to be. If it would be disorienting. I bet it wouldn't. Oh, they did another oh, vocal thing, too. Oh, I like that too. bridge. They did, they, oh. they did the pause. Oh. Awesome. I- oh, I like this chorus, too. Oh, this is good. Oh, I love this. What a chorus. What a good chorus. I love this, like, slightly techno heavy metal. Uh-huh. It's a good It's a good blend. Sometimes I think a lot of, um, a lot of like, electronic metal bands take it too far. You know? Uh, like, Star Set, Red. Other, other bands like that have dabbled in electronic stuff. I haven't liked as much. This one seems to be striking a good balance. I've just realized I haven't been really paying even attention to the lyrics. I've been so sucked into the sound. I've just been sitting here rocking my head, like banging my head in my chair here. I really like this. This is a nice, really like laid back bridge. But this is going to make my top three hard. Oh, I like that whisper. The whisper into the exploding instrumental here. That's That's classic. Classic. Done well, though. Yes, indeed. This is going to make my top three hard. Call it mad if you want to. This is a pretty good song. Ooh, hard stop. I like that. Oh, and just this hard stop. Another hard stop. I like it a lot. It was good. I'm now going to have to sit here and really ponder what I'm going to do with my top three. Turns you into a Glasslands fan. So, yeah, I'm going to need... I got some homework for you. Okay. I'm going to need you to ris- listen to the rest of this concept album, determine if it's as good as that song was, and if it was, make it a future episode. Future episode? Question mark? Who knows? Eh. I think this would be a fun... That'd be fun to take a single that was given to us and turn it into a full episode because we liked it so much. I think that's not bad. So, But only if you think the rest of it was as good as this. Don't set me up for disappointment. I'll set you up for whatever I want to set you up for. That's the beauty of it. That yeah, is the beauty of it. You don't figure out you're about to be disappointed until the night before. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well... This episode is about to come to a close, and we will pick our favorite songs. And at that Wait, what? point, what? At that point, the winner will take it all. Oh, okay. You ba- you baited me. So for our last single, we will be talking about "The Winner Takes It All" by ABBA. Classic, classic karaoke song. Is it? I don't know if I know it at all. Uh, I, it's a pretty popular. Like, if you're looking for a duet, you don't know "The Winner Takes It All." No. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Do you know much of ABBA at all? I know Dancing Queen, and uh, everyone sings that one part from Mamma Mia. Yeah, I feel like this is a great go-to, like, duet karaoke song. So, like, if you're looking for a song to duet with somebody on at karaoke night, this is a great one to pick. Yeah? Okay. Because there's a, there's a catchy chorus you can both come in on, and then you can each take a verse. It's... Yeah. 
See, ABBA's a band that I haven't touched yet, but they'll probably be worthy of a full episode someday. So. Sure they will. Just get ready for that. There's another one. You know, we'll see how the single goes. ABBA is the quintessential Swedish pop band. Their name is an acronym for the first names of their four members. Agnetha, Benny, Bjorn, and Anifrid, or Frida. They formed in 1972, and they were the very first Swedish act to win Eurovision in 1974. Yeah. What a connection with our first singles episode uh-huh. with uh, Dali Freyer from Eurovision. I, th- I thought about that. Yeah. In 2005, the song they brought for Eurovision, called Waterloo, was voted the best song Eurovision ever had. They broke up in 1982, but of course their music had taken on a life of its own through compilation albums and then through the 1999 smash hit musical Mamma Mia. Lo and behold, ABBA got back together in 2016, put out a new album in late 2021, so they're still making music and gearing up for something that is a virtual (laughs) live residency where their digital avatars will appear on stage. I don't understand. Weird. I have no idea. But essentially, ABBA is doing some virtual live residency. That sounds like future Factor Spin material when we get around to an episode. Find out more about that. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's it's curious. It's maybe worth looking into. This song, The Winner Takes It All, is the second track from their seventh studio album, Super Trooper, and it came out in 1980. So without further ado, I suppose we should uh, listen to this final single in three, two, one, go. Yep, that's ABBA. Yep, classic ABBA sound. You tell right away. <laughs> tell right away. I'm a sucker for a song like this. Yeah? It's a, it's, a, it's a like power ballad almost in a way. It's like a Swedish power ballad. Yeah. Oh, I like how the piano's kind of fading into that synthesizer. Uh-huh. It's becoming more poppy. Bit of a cheesy rhyme right here, but what do you expect? From someone like ABBA. (laughs) Yeah, well. Nothing to say, no more ace to play. That justifies the rhyme scheme. And the winner takes it all. I like like that metaphor. Loser standing small. That's exactly the opposite of what it should be. What do you mean it's the opposite of what it should be? The opposite of how it's usually expressed. Right, gotcha, 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 gotcha. The opposite of how it's usually expressed, yes. But not the opposite of what it should be. I like the drums. It's given us a good little uh, pulse to this. I do like, because you come out of that chorus, but they don't back it back down for the verse. They keep it at that intensity. And then they take it up again on the next chorus. But it's a different worded chorus. Winner takes it all. You see how this would be a good, like, uh, it's a very simple rhythm. Very simple song to sing along to karaoke. Yeah. And this is kind of, this kind of fits the singles theme, you know. Verse 3 here, talking about, like, kind of a scorned lover situation here. Like, You've left me for someone else. Do they kiss the same as I kissed you? Kind of fits. Yeah. Song for my people. And the thing that really gets me about a song like this is the fact that, again, they change the chorus each time. They keep that same catchy sound, but they give you something new with it. Yeah. I love that. You know me. I love it. I do. Yeah. This doesn't strike me as a great karaoke song. Really? Yeah, I'm not feeling it. It's got a pop, poppy beat. It's got an older thing. And then yeah, just two people do wedding, coming in together on the chorus, but each taking a verse. Yeah. I think every karaoke night I've ever participated in has done this song. It's long. It's like uh, it's like medium energy. I call it like a five or a six on the energy level. Six is generous. I, th- I think six is about right where I would put it. And it doesn't. And it's it changes up every time. Like you said, the lyrics are all different. You can't roll with it. Yeah, but you know, you're you're doing drunken karaoke. You just care about the winner takes it all hit. Everything builds to that hit. That's the important hit for the karaoke song. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm too sober <laughs> to understand this song. Yeah, just imagine two people drunk, arms around one another, singing into a dirty microphone, just the winner takes it all, you know? Just, just really belting it out. It's a good song to belt. You know, that's a good thing about a, a karaoke track. I'll be honest, I'm picturing you singing it with the gopher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is what we were doing during our making up, you know, montage where we were having dinner and everything. We did karaoke. His arm is out and your arm is comically stretched down to meet him. <laughs> and we're just squeak, 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 squeak. Well, you can sing the real words. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I thought we would do it in Gopher. I, I like this song. I'm a fan of this song. Another fade out, too. Fitting. The song never really ends. Well, that's, uh, that's the singles. So now we've heard from 10 different artists of various genres. 
And uh, I think we've got a little game in store. A little, little bit of not factor spin, factor spin. Guess who? Or spin, as the mixtaper has dubbed it. Well, that's that's what the mixtaper like to call it, because there has to be a spin element to it, I guess. <laughs> let's get them on out here. Yeah, let's. Hey, it's me, mixtaper. Hello, mixtaper. Welcome back to a singles episode. It's been a minute since we played anything other than Factor Spin. Yeah, well, I'm not counting, you know, guess that dollar amount, the other really popular game. <laughs> I guess so. People people really do love watching me, <laughs> listening to me struggle with guess that dollar amount. But now we're back for everybody's third, you know, everybody's third favorite Spin It game. Guess who? Or Spin. So I'd like to, I'd like to do a rules clarification for everybody. You know, it's been a long time. Yeah, we're less familiar. Tell the audience how Guess Who or Spin is going to work. Yes, so Guess Who or Spin. Normally we play Fact or Spin, where I give you facts about the artists we're doing, and you have to tell me if they're true or not. Yeah, some will be fake. Well, we have we have 10 different artists uh, this week, so that's kind of hard to do. And so this time we're doing Guess Who or Spin. All the facts I give you are true facts, but you have to tell me which artist you think the fact is about. Yes. Now the or spin portion of this. I got you with this last uh, last time. A little a little uh, surprise. <laughs> yeah, because you just lied to me. You just made up a, a lie about the watermelon festival. Yes, I and so I'm clarifying. You know, on this round of guess who or spin, exactly one of my four supposedly true facts is a spin. So <laughs> oh, not no. only will you have to tell me. <laughs> Who the artist is, but you have a rogue spin out there that you can, you know, accuse me of. Yeah, that's terrifying. So you will have, you will have three, you will have three facts about the artists that we just, that you and Connor just talked about. That I'll have to identify, and one fake one. Yep, hidden amongst them. Oh. So with that, let's jump in with our first one, which is, they recorded a song while getting shot with paintballs. <laughs> Shot with paintballs? Yes. Okay, so recorded a song, not just like did it for a music video. This was a recording of the song that like went on to be an album cut or a single. No. No. They recorded a song. It's not on anything. Oh, okay. That's interesting. What was the reason? Why'd they need paintballs? Was it to get a better sound? A bonding exercise. Oh, it was to bond. Interesting. So this is one of the bands then. I think I can, or a spin. It's either a band or a spin. We'll rule out all our solo artists. <laughs> the, 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 ne the next Spin It Game show, Band or Spin? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, yes, this is, a, this is a band. They went to a local paintball range and rented out the area for the day. Oh, it's a tough call. This feels like it's true. I, I'm leaning away from Spin. Unless you, I guess you would play your Spin right at the beginning. But I think this is true. And I think... I'm leaning towards Glimmer's Polar Boys or Pressure Kids. Mm, so you think this is one of the newer bands? What What if this was George Gershwin? <laughs> the orchestra just went and recorded a <laughs> wedding shot. Um, yeah, I think this is one of the newer bands. I think I'm, well, The I mean, it's probably not ABBA. <laughs> I don't know when paintballing became like a fad, but I'm not so sure it was in 1970-something. So I'm going to lean on Glimmers. I'm going to say that this is probably a true paintballing fact about Glimmers. This is not a true paintballing fact about Glimmers. Oh, shoot. So last time we did three strikes. Yes, yes. And we will do that again. Okay. Well, good, because I have three guesses. Um, <laughs> so I guess I'll move to my next guess, which is going to be the Polar Boys. This is not a true paintballing fact about the Polar Boys. Uh-oh. Okay. Then I'm going to say this is about... I'm pivoting. I think this is about sink in. Wow. Oh, surprise pivot. A surprise pivot. This is not a true paintballing fact about sink in. Wow, I missed it. You missed it. I also want another one more quick rule clarification that we missed. So, like you mentioned last time I gave you three strikes. This time I'm giving you three strikes as well but the because it's way harder for you than typical factor spin you will get the number of points based on you know in the inverse of the guess so first guess is three points two guess two points third guess one point 
Sure, that's fine. So you will get more points for getting it faster. Thanks for telling me that on this round where I scored zero points. The other thing I should say is don't tell me yet because this could be your spin. So we'll recap at the end. But for now, we know that this is not about the three of them. Interesting. That makes it harder on you, doesn't it? it? Yeah. Well, it makes it more intriguing for the audience. So we don't know who the paintballer was. If they even exist. Let's move on to the next fact. Okay. My next fact is it that they have written songs for a musical. Oh, okay. Well, so this is this feels like I have more questions. Okay. <clears throat> so obviously ABBA's music is very famously featured in the musical Mamma Mia. I I take it to mean that you are implying they wrote the music with the musical in mind and that it's not Mamma Mia. Yes. So uh, listening to these artists, obviously George Gershwin is a, a musical <laughs> writing candidate cuz he has to be. <laughs> And um, I also got musical or soundtrack vibes from The Fifth Dimension. Mm. Yeah, that was striking to me. So I think my first guess is going to be... Not even going to ask any questions about the fact. Just going to start guessing. Fine, fine. I was just trying to take some swings here. What's the musical about? <clears throat> this musical reflects the creator's views of the hippie counterculture and sexual revolution the late 1960s and several oh. uh, of its songs became uh, are, are themed around the anti-vietnam war peace movement. okay <clears throat> now that's interesting that is interesting i think that might be a little bit of a false flag i think that's a red herring oh? i think yeah you telling me that <laughs> would mm, kind of make me want to go towards fifth dimension the band who mm -hmm. existed in the late 60s mm -hmm. the musical's profanity Depiction of use of illegal drugs, treatment of sexuality, irre irre irreverence for the American flag, and its nude scene caused many moments of controversy. Whoa. They did a whole scene where everyone on stage was nude. Interesting. They, I... Like, like fully nude, not even tastefully. <laughs> right. Yeah, I kind of assumed. Okay. So, I guess that has to be my first guess, doesn't it? Or this is a spin. What? Ugh! I think <laughs> this is probably the fifth dimension. You're going fifth dimension. Yes. Even though you thought it was a red herring. Yeah, I can't. I can't justify any of these other artists doing this. This is a true fact about the fifth dimension. Oh, oh, you almost had me. I know. I really did try to. Get, I thought if I gave you the detail about the 1960s, you would get suspicious of why I gave you that detail. I tried to reverse psychology you there. I just didn't fall for it. Um, yeah. But not only, and I really took a gamble with this one, but not only is, did they write a song for the musical Hair, the, and the full title is Hair, the American Tribal Love Rock Musical, but the song they wrote is Age of Aquarius. If see, felt like a musical song. So, yeah, so both Age of Aquarius and Let the Sun Shine In are, it's the opening track and the closing track to the musical that they've done. That they mashed up there in the song we just listened to. Or that you and Connor just listened to. Right. Well, who knew? Yeah. So it took a gamble on you not seeing that one uh, when we did the song. You might have. <laughs> well, I've got three points and I've eliminated a, a potential spin. Yeah. You got one. You're sitting at three points out of a possible 12. That's right. Well, now out of a possible nine. Because we already know you didn't get any points for the first All right. One. Now pipe down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my next one for you, the outfits that they wear on stage are for tax purposes. For tax purposes, you say? Yes. So I'm guessing these are really flamboyant, extravagant outfits uh, that they would like to write off and like. Perhaps. I don't know. What's the deal? What, what tax purposes are the outfits? Honestly, I refuse to describe the outfits because we have very different style artists on the list. And so that will significantly limit the list. <laughs> Yeah, we do. Sure. Well, don't describe the outfits. Just tell me why they use them for taxes. What, what's the deal? Yes. So according to according to the law, uh, costumes are allowed to be written off for tax purposes as long as they could never conceivably be called day wear. Call, called day wear? Yes. So this is something... Something you'd wear in your everyday life. Totally not day wear. And we did establish that you could repeat artists. I did. I did. That was also established the last time. Yes. Another rule we forgot to mention up top. Well, 
I can repeat an artist. Just mentioning it now. So why bother claiming your outfits for taxes? Were they going to be flamboyant anyway and just wanted uh, wanted to write it off? Or I don't know. What was the deal? They wanted to be able to have what they want. They wanted they wanted to get a tax break on. And an easy way to get tax breaks when you when you got a performance is to write off your clothing. Sure. And you can't tell me anything that they did to make it distinctly not day wear. Uh, one moment. Yeah, they uh, uh they've won they've worn things like the feather boa things, capes, uh Oh. Really kind of some gaudy outfits. They've just done all sorts of random things with their outfits to make them... So it's not a consistent outfit? No. Oh, okay. I thought it was one outfit that they would wear all the time. One of these outfits... One of these outfits, uh, they've got a bunch of... They look like polka dot man. They've got just polka dots all over it. I think I'm going to lock in my first guess. Okay. I think I'm going to say the Polar Boys. The Polar Boys. Yeah, that's going to be my first guess. I don't know a ton about them, but their music kind of lends itself to fun performances from what I know of it. And uh, I, could, I could see it. This is not a true fact about the Polar Boys. Okay, um, that gets hard. See, so we've seen Glimmers, and I'm familiar with Glasslands. They just did a big national tour, and I saw some stuff from them. They don't seem like uh, distinctly not day wear. Not feather boas and polka dots and ABBA. I guess, has, you know, certain styles that they go with, but I don't know if they write them off for taxes. Mm -hmm. I'll give you another piece of information before your next guess. In an interview, they said that, in their opinion, they look like a bu bunch of nuts in those outfits. That, they can't, that, uh, that nobody has ever been as badly dressed on stage as they are. Whoa. Interesting. Interesting. Who's been the worst dressed on stage? Of all time. Apparently they think them. Could it be Julian Moon? Could it be? I'm going to say that it might be and make a guess. This is not a true fact about Julian Moon. Crap. I'm sweating it out. Keep in mind we have a rogue spin floating somewhere. I know. And I have one more piece of information I will now give you. You're withholding things. Yes, please. No, you're not asking, qu you're not asking questions. I'm sorry. You're yeah, right. It's true. It's your own fault. That's how the, that's the rules. And so I'm being generous and giving you additional, you know, more dialed in uh, information with, with each of your guesses to give you a better chance of getting it. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Their outfits have inspired Halloween costumes for decades. <laughs> okay. Well, then, yeah, that would have been a great. Sorry I didn't ask how many Halloween costumes have their outfits inspired. <laughs> Well, I wasn't going to give you the super damning evidence right away. <laughs> beavers. Beaver damning. <laughs> yes, beavers. Um, yeah, yes. It's, it's okay to say that one. Um, we built we built those we built those in the uh, montage as well. <laughs> you and the gophers. Me and my gopher built beaver dam. <laughs> mm, I'm skeptical. Well, then I think mm. I have to make my third guess, ABBA. You're going ABBA. Because the only bands no, that have been repeat. around for decades are, I mean, George Gershwin, if he dressed like a polka dot man, and if people are going as George Gershwin for Halloween, um, but it's the fifth dimension or it's ABBA. You already did a fifth dimension fact. ABBA would inspire a lot of Halloween costumes, perhaps as the dancing queen. I'm just, I'm just saying ABBA. This is a true fact about ABBA. Oh, wow, I should have, I knew. I like this though. I like that. I like that I give you more you know, detailed information as you do your guesses to narrow in, to make it a little easier on you as you get less and less guesses. I like this. This is a fun little mechanic. It is. It there's is. There's some pictures of their outfits. I've, I've seen ABBA. I just, I didn't realize it was... Oh, there's the outfits I was describing. The polka dots, the cape, the bow, uh, boa, the weird cat onesies. Yeah. They've anyway. kind of done it all. <laughs> My last one for you... So you're saying at four points now. You got that one on your last I have four guess. points, and I know that, that paintball could still be a spin. Or this one. Could be. Could be. This one also could be a spin. And it is. They share a name with a seafood company. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so, do they share this name intentionally with the seafood company? Uh, describe what you mean by intentional. 
did they, for example, if it's a band, uh, you know, does Glasslands the band just happen to love Glasslands the seafood company and go, that's the one. They did not pick this name because of the seafood company, no. So the seafood, did the seafood company predate the band? Yes. And are the names in any way related? No. Okay. Yes, everybody loves Glimmer's seafood. Uh, <laughs> Gershwin seafood. Rhapsody in the blue ocean. Okay. That's what that talks about, actually. Seafood. Yeah, like seafood and gophers. Can I give uh, Rhapsody in Blue my new Spin It favorite rap song award? No, no. favorite. It gets oh. the favorite R-H-A-P song. <laughs> yeah, fa- favorite yeah, rap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite rap. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Polar Boys is a cool name for seafood. If you're getting, like, Arctic fish. I don't know. Polar fish. Um, sink in, like a bobber and a sinker on your fishing hooks. I mean, Wallen is his actual birth name, but Walleye is a kind of fish. I don't know. You tell me. We already know the origin of the name ABBA. I'll throw that one right away. I think I'm going to say that this one is a spin. This is. Not a spin. Real? Oh, oh. So paintball was just outright false. Yeah. So for those playing along at home, paintball was not a true fact. I, you, I, you nailed it when you said it offhand that I maybe would start with the spin to get it out of the way. That's exactly what I did. Yep. <laughs> so this has to be true. This is indeed a true fact. But about who? I think I'm gonna start off my my non-spin guesses with. The Polar Boys. I know it doesn't make a ton of sense, but it makes more sense than most of the other names. <clears throat> this is not a true fact about the Polar Boys. Crap. That was the easiest one. That was the best one. Should we start a fishing company called the Polar Boys? <laughs> I think we should. Seems like this is an untapped market. But if This seafood company has been around since the 19th century. That's old. And uh, yeah, shares, yeah I, I guess shares a name with this band in case you were still throwing around the idea of some of the solo artists we talked about this is a band <laughs> in case in case i was throwing around the idea of gershwin or wallen walleye or I, no i wasn't that was done um and another popular thing they make other than caviar is fisk bular what's that now fisk bular what is that a type of fish ball fish balls yeah little round meatballs made from fish they're boiled or deep fried. So what you... That sounds like a word that could be Swedish of sorts. Uh, now you've got me thinking maybe Abba's still on the table. That's definitely a Swedish word. I know for a fact that that's a Swedish word. But that might not mean that it's Abba. Sorry about the fish pun, but is it a red herring? Good grief. <laughs> I think the... No, I think the Fisk Bular is going to take me all the way to Abba. Even though we know where their name comes from, and it's probably pure coincidence, I'm going to say that this is about ABBA. You're going to take it all to ABBA, and you're going to be the winner. Oh. This is a true fact about ABBA. I knew it. Yes. I didn't know it. That's why it was my third guess by a thread. Yeah, another one point for you for a total of five out of a possible 12. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Not quite halfway. I wasn't sure if you'd pick up on Fiskular being a Swedish word or not, but that's why I threw it out at you. Yeah, that was the only saving grace. My next guess was maybe going to be Glasslands, but that's that doesn't make sense. Yeah, they share a name. They came up with their little acronym for their name, but it also happened to be a Swedish seafood company, also named ABBA. Well, wouldn't you know, the worst dressed fishing company ever. <laughs> Yeah, that that brings us to a close on Guess Who or Spin. Yeah, we'll see you next week for a more traditional round of Fact or Spin. Yeah, I guess I'll get out here so you guys can final spin. A lot of spins. A lot of spinning at the end of the Spin It singles episode. But only one today from the mixtaper, and you didn't get it. It passed me by. I was skeptical of it from the beginning, but for some reason... Just given the normal caliber of lies you tell. That one, I let hold enough water to fool me. Yeah, I really had a hard time finding information about a lot of these artists. There are a lot of up-and-comer artists that I don't have, <laughs> there's not a lot of readily available information about. So, I had to double up on ABBA. But Well, you did great. I'll see you next week. Yes, you will. Yeah. All right, welcome back, Connor. Are you ready to put a final spin on this singles episode? Yes, let's do it. 
All right, so singles episode final spin's a little different because we don't actually score anything like we normally would. Basically, we're just going to pick uh, our favorite songs. Each of us will get a pick. We cannot pick our own song that we brought. If you wanted to take Rhapsody in Blue from this list of ten, I'm sorry. It is not on the table for you. But it is for you, and you're going to take it, right? Well... You set the precedent last time of t taking mine as your favorite. No, I didn't. Absolutely not. We took Solstice and, and Mac Davis. But uh, didn't you get a top three last week? Didn't you give yourself a top three for this episode last time? I could have sworn mine made it on your top three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yours was in my top three. Oh, you're right. Maybe that's what we'll do. Right. Okay. Yeah. Let's say we, yeah, we each did our top threes. I think for me, my number, I haven't thought this out yet. I have to think. Do you want me to go first then? What do you think? Oh, you've got it already. That's true. You're the top three guy. Sure. I thought this was a great little batch of singles. I agree. The last singles, we did a lot of popular artists kind of one-offs you know eric clapton's all that so it was fun to dive into some lesser known artists that you that the listeners listen to and things we would have you know we eventually plan to do every album ever so we would have eventually gotten to them but they would have been you know way down the list so it was nice to get a little peek into their world um my top three in playlist order nothing has changed by the polar boys okay for me it's you by glimmers Mad by Glasslands, and Conorable Mention going back up to Loser by Julian Moon. Look at that, the Conorable Mention to Julian Moon. Yeah, so that's mine. Now, you only get top three. No no Jamesable Mention for you. You can't steal my shtick. No, that's, this isn't a you pick. Oh, it's tough, it's tough. We, um, I think um, I'm going to take Loser as my number three. Okay, Loser is number three, okay. Uh huh. I thought there was there was a good build to that song. My number two song, and it's a close number two. My number two song is for me, it's you by Glimmers. Nice. My number one song is Nothing Has Changed, Polar Boys. Nice. Yeah, I was debating Mad, Mad and Glasslands is really also very close to this top three, but yeah, that's just the way it's shaken up. So which ones are we taking for? Playlist. Well, for you, it's for me, it's you, right? And for me, nothing has changed. How dare you assume what mine was going to be? I really just wanted to say for you, it's for me, it's you. Gotcha. Uh, but I mean, you you nailed it. Nothing has changed. And for me, it's you are the two I won. So I was going to wait to see which of those two you picked. And then I was going to take the other ones. So. Well, those were my top two. Those were two of your top three. I really don't think uh, we'll have any problem with those. Yeah. For me, it's you, and nothing has changed. Go in, immortalized on the Spin It favorite songs playlist. The rest, immortalized on the Spin It singles episode two playlist, which you can find on Spotify and YouTube. Listen along with us. Check out all these cool songs. And, uh... All 16 and a half minutes of Rhapsody. Of Rhapsody in Blue. Yours for the listening. And with that... I guess we'll uh, send you on your merry way. If you're looking for us on social media, you can find us on Twitter at SpinItPod, on Instagram at SpinItPodOfficial, and on the web at www.SpinItPod.com. Give us a follow. Give us uh, five of those little stars if you want. And until next week, keep spinning. Keep spinning. I'm sad. I have some really good units. I'm sad this is a unit episode. I have some good ones. Oh, no. <laughs> highlights I, I wrote them down just for in case i found a way to shoehorn them in well shoehorn them in now as we're fading out yeah they were undead gophers going mad montages and casual beavers casual beavers that's maybe didn't even make it into the actual episode into the episode i don't know we'll find out if that doesn't make any sense to you audience well damn <laughs>